Hi, my name is Aaron James de los Reyes, student of AMA Online Education. Today I would like to present the topics that I've chosen in my subject, um, Data Communication and Networking 1. So today I, I will present to you the topics in Group 1 and the topics that I have chosen is number one, networking fundamentals. The second one is network topologies. The last one will be network models. So let's go ahead to the networking fundamentals. For this topic, we will discuss about the computer networks. What are the computer networks? What are some of the network components? And the standard representat representation for network devices and which applications that uses a network. So let us know what are computer networks. So basically it is a set of computers that are connected together. And these are some of the end devices that we have and which are connected with each other by the use of the intermediary devices. So the purpose is to share resources within the network and to communicate using electronic means. Just like what I've mentioned just now, they are connected with each other to share resources within their network and also communicate using the electronic means. So how does actually it work? They are connected by using a network cable physical wires through network connections and there is also a wireless connection which uses radio waves and infrared signal so like what we have here we have the wireless router and these are the wireless devices that are connected without the physical cable so let us proceed with the next one network components so for the network components, we have end devices, which I mentioned earlier. These are the devices that interconnects with each other and has a unique IP address. For example, um, laptops, personal computers, smartphones, printer, workstations, and others. And next we have intermediary devices, which provide connectivity with the end devices which we have over here hubs modems network cards routers and switches so here are the standard representation of network devices so this one we can see this kind of icon in Cisco packet tracer which we will be showing later on after this slide. So applications that uses a network. First we have games. So in order to play with other people or to have multiplayer games, we use this network to play with other people. And also we have the da databases which we request data from databases or from the server this uses in network or internet as well and also we have email video conferencing like Skype and WebEx and file transfer protocol or FTP so these are the applications that uses a network so before we proceed to the next topic I'd like to show you in Cisco Packet Tracer the different types of network components. First, we have over here the different kinds of end devices. We have the personal computers, laptop, server, smartphone, analog phone, printer, and more. And we have on the other side here, we have the router for the intermediary devices, switches, and we also have hubs for that. 
and these are the some of the network components that we have here in Cisco Packet Tracer. We also have different kinds of connections, cables that we can use. So for example, we have here the coaxial cable, the copper straight through, copper crossover, and fiber cables connection. So now we will proceed to the next topic, network topologies. So in this topic, we will discuss about the three basic types of network, server client model, different network topologies, network protocols, and communications. So let's proceed with the three basic types of networks. So we have over here the local area network, the wide area network, and metropolitan area network. First, we will discuss about the local area network. This is basically the arrangement of the end devices connected to the switch. Local area network is a single geographical area that is usually used in small businesses, um, small campus, or region. Next, we have the wide area network or WAN, which uses a two or more LAN um, in large geographic area. And we can see over here that the LAN connections are also connected with the other LAN connections or the wide area network all over the world. Next, we have the Metropolitan Area Network, which is used, um, which is composed of several LANs with higher capacity technology, which is used mainly between cities and they use fiber optical links, which we can see over here that the factory warehouses branch office are connected mainly to the central office of the city so these are the three basic types of networks next we have we will discuss about the server client model basically server provides services and information and client will be computer hardware software that access a service from a server so this is the server-client relationship or model which uses internet and to access, to be able to access the server by the clients. Clients meaning the hardware or software which are our personal computers, smartphones and other end devices. Next we have the different network topologies. Network topologies basically uh, explains the arrangement of the end devices or how are they connected within the network. So we have first the bus topology, which is connected to a single cable. So what we can see over here, it is connected to a single cable, basically to be able to be connected within each other in the network. Next we have the ring topology. It is a ring-like design and connected to one another which is the last PC will be connected to the first PC and it is connected also with each other. Next we have the star topology which is connected to a single hub like what we can see over here. Next we have the network protocols and communications. Protocols refers to the rules that handles communications. So in communications or network communications there are specific rules as well and we call these protocols and these are followed by the network protocols which expresses the format or structure. And the commonly used protocols that we have, uh, that we are aware of, 
it's most specially is the HTTP or the Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which handles interaction between web server and web client. Next, we have the TCP or Transmission Control Protocol, which handles conversation between servers and clients and responsible for controlling information exchanges. Next, we have the Internet Protocol or IP, enables internet working and destination path of hosts to another. Lastly, we have the multiple protocols, which contains multiple protocols and actual data, which the HTTP may or may not exist. So we are aware of these uh, commonly used protocols. And these are the definition of the protocols that we commonly use. Next, we have the encapsulation and decapsulation. So for the encapsulation, it means it is a process that protect and hide a process from possible outside interference. In other words, it converts one protocol to another so that it can be used across the network. So this is the representation of encapsulation which we have here the header, data, and trailer. So the encapsulation adds header and trailer to the data. For the decapsulation, basically the opposite of encapsulation process, which is the process of opening the encapsulated data. And what we can see over here, the deencapsulation removes the header and trailer from the data. And for the Cisco Packet Tracer, for the representation of this topic, Network Topologies, I will show you the Network Topologies that we can do in Cisco Packet Tracer. First, we can do the Star and Ring Topology, just for an example. So we'll start first with the Star Topology. We have over here the single hub. <clears throat> okay, and let's add personal computers which will be connected to the hub. So this is one of the example of network topology, which is the star topology that uses a single hub connection. We can also do ring topology. We can do the ring topology by adding end devices or personal computers. This is enough. Let's add switches. the wrong switch Okay, so this is the ring topology. So let's proceed 
to the next topic. Last topic will be network models. Okay, for the network network model, we will discuss about protocol model and reference model. The functions of TCP IP model and functions of the S OSI model. Okay, let's proceed first with the protocol and reference model. What is protocol model? It basically lays out a model that is closely equivalent to the structure of a certain protocol. So it sets rules for communication within a layer. In other words, it is a set of rules for communications within a layer and to explain that with a representat representation of graphics we have here the levels of levels of the communication first the data transmission or of the data will be the category categorization categorization of data next we have the structure of data and then the exchange of data then we have the reference model which issues a common reference for maintaining consistency within all types of network protocols and services it is an abstract framework produced by an expert Next, we have the TCP IP model. So, a TCP and TCP IP model stands for Transmission Control Protocol Internet Protocol Model. So, it is also known as Department of Defense or TOD model, which is used in the internet. So, the the layers that we have for the TCP IP model we have the application layer which allow access to network resources and then the transport layer that provides reliable process to process message delivery and error delivery then we have the internet layer which move packets from source to destination and provide internet working Last will be the network interface layer which is responsible for the transmission for the between two devices on the same network so this is the TCP IP model next we have the OSI model which stands for open systems interconnect model what does it do is basically it breaks down network function and this is the popular type of internet work reference model that we have so the OSI model has seven layers and the first the layer one will be the physical layer which transmits raw bitstream over the physical medium next we have the data link layer or the layer two that defines the format of data on the network Network layer is the layer tree that decides which physical path the data will take. Then transport layer transmits data using transmission protocols including TCP and UDP. The layer 5 will be the session layer, maintains connections and is responsible for controlling ports and sessions. Layer 6 will be presentation layer that ensures data in a usable format and is where the data encryption occurs the last layer will be the application layer in which human computer interaction layer where applications can access the network services so this is the osi model that has seven layers and which is which is uh, the popular type of internet work reference model that we have. So that is all for my part. Thank you. I hope I have covered all the topics 
that I chose in group one. Thank you so much. Hi, this is the second part of the course project for IT211. Part two will be the completion of this table, which we will convert the network address to binary, convert the prefix length to subnet mask and vice versa, and to identify the three types of addresses, network broadcast gateway address. So this one I have already key in or fill in my answers, but I will I will discuss I will discuss to you how I got the answer. So for number one, we have here the network address 172.201.95.32. And to find the prefix length. Let's go over here to the Excel table that I created. For number one, we will have to list the subnet mask. So the subnet mask for that IP address or network address, we have the 255.255.255.224. So to get the prefix length, we will just have to calculate to sum the total of each octet value or the ones in each octet value so we have here which is 8 8 8 and 7 so to to total everything will be 31 which is the sum of all the octet value in binary next we have number two broadcast address i got 172.201.95.35 as my answer and this is how i got the answer number two so first we will have to get the network address over here so i place the network address and if that the subnet mask which i have to compare both of them and i use a formula to get the broadcast value so before that the formula will be if the subnet mask is 255 we will just have to ignore the subnet subnet mask and use the network address we have here 255 ignore and use the network address and the third octet value will be 95 and the last one will be 335 how I got 35 is first we have to get the multiplier multiplier multipliers formula will be 256 minus the subnet value so we have over here 224 so 256 minus 224 is equals 12 so to get the broadcast value is to determine how many multiples of multiplier to get a value which is greater than the subnet value or which is greater than the network address I'm sorry about that network address value so to be greater than 32 we will have to times the multiplier 12 by 3 which is 36 for this case which is greater than 32 and minus 1 we subtract 1 we get 35 that's how we got 172.201.95.35 as our answer in number 2 for the broadcast address. Next, we have we have to find the subnet mask 
for the network address 10.10.78.128 so let's go to the excel file number three okay so for the for the number three subnet mask we have to list on the network address and also get the binary of the network address and then to get to get the subnet mask we have to we have to look at the network address subnet mask network address and subnet mask the formula will be the subnet value is equals to 256 minus the network value which is 128 so we have already subtract the 128 from the 256 that's how we got 128 as our subnet mask and then to get the gateway address for number 4 we just add one value to the last network or last octet value of the network address which is 128 and plus 1 that is 129 so the gateway address will be 10.10.78.129 and then so let's proceed to number 5 for the binary IP address of 192.84.235.0 will be will be 11000000.0101010100.1110101.000000 dot triple zero 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 and to get the binary or to get how I get the answer is I listed down the network address and make sure to total up the uh, total up the the value of the each octet value in the network address and then we got the number six as our broadcast broadcast address the same thing that we did in number in number two we have the multiplier we listed down the network address and subnet mask and we we got a zero from the network address which is the rule of if there is if it is a zero and it is a zero as well in subnet mass we have to ignore it and write down 255 so for this case we do not have to use the formula to get the broadcast value because we'll only use this if it's not zero value so for the broadcast broadcast address of the network address 192.84.235.0 will be 192.84.235.255 for number 7 the prefix length of the 172.99.184.64 network address will be prefix length 26 how I got 26 just like earlier we have to list down the subnet mask and then list down the binary and then total add total and total up the uh, total up everything in the binary and that's how we got 26 as our prefix length for number eight we have we will we will have to find out the broadcast broadcast address of the network address 172.99.184.64 and I got 172.99.184.127 
I got it by using the formula again and sorry I have to correct this one greater than the network value okay for the network address and subnet mask we have to compare both of them and then if it is 255 for the subnet mask we have just have to ignore this and use the network address same goes to the second octet value 99 same goes with the third octet value which one it for so we have to find the last one so the last one is the formula that we will use is the multiplier to get the multiplier we have to subtract subnet value from 256 so we have 256 minus 192 we got 64 so the broadcast value will be to determine how many multiples of multiplier to get a value which is greater than the network value so the multiplier is 64 and we have and this network value is 64 as well so we have to be greater than the six, greater than 64 so we have multiplied the 64 by 2 and then minus subtract it by 1 so we got 64 times 2 will be 128 minus 1 we got 127 that is how I got the 127 as the last octet value of the broadcast broadcast address next we have number 9 for the number 9 we have to find the binary of the IP address for number 9 same thing we have to list down the network address and then list down the binary which total up to the network value of each octet value so we got the IP address binary from the table 11010100100100100000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000